is the original. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god. 
greatest joy is always the people that I work with. Yeah. The director, the Susie that directs us, is one of my favorite people, one of my really good friends. I hooked her up with her boy. boyfriend that she yeah. had love with, that now she wants to marry, and she had given up on love. And I said, she I have it. She, she, I have the man for you. I knew who it was, and he was unavailable for several years, but I knew. I had the person for you. And then I, I, I they went on a blind date. By the way, when I came in after you had that conversation, she was like, Kate's trying to set me up with like a friend. I have it up with another guy. And now uh, she's like, I owe, I owe you everything, Kate. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> now hook me up.
wanted me to be rich? Oh, 
feel that like at my best I'm pretty optimistic. So that's like her. I mean like yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a klutz, so that's kind of like her. I think I'm a better cook than her. Although some people may beg to differ. <laughs> or something like that. So we got there at 8.45, they so let us in. We're like, we need to get to the haunted mansion at least that one ride. And we couldn't figure it out. And Stephanie's like, I know the way. And she said, she right. actually ran the right way. I she, 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 no, they, they, seriously, they were closing off the gate. And I was like, you couldn't enter. And she was like, yes, we can't get in. And I was like, we, like, we can find a way. Yeah, we can't do it. And I saw that there was one, like, there was one like, little bridge. And I was like, guys, hurry. Do you guys know yeah. you guys are Disney World? Yeah. So they, they walked off the bench right? Oh. And she snuck in. Liberty, uh, the yeah. Liberty Square. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was like, guys, I know there's spring because in in, uh, in LA, in Disneyland, yeah. there's a little place that you can cut through for a two lane. I was like, there's a bridge, come on. Like, honestly, if they were going to block it all off at the same time, they would have done it. Why I thought we were sneaking through. I was like, we just made the cut. They can't get you were, you were playing. Your yeah, you were playing your character. Yeah, and then, and, but then because your guys' park is not laid out exactly the same, you know, it's, it's so like, bridge between Fantasyland and like Adventureland and Frontierland happens before the lagoon and ours happens in the back of the lagoon. Yeah. So they were like, so, you know where we're going. And they were like, yeah. I'm like, I hate running. You better know where you're going. And like, so, what's so terrible is when we cut through, Honey Mansion is like right, right there. And we went all, like, all the way to Flash Mountain. We went all the way to Flash Mountain. And we're like running like, we can do it. And then it's like, we're not going to make it. I'm like, it's like, ready. yeah. Why do you pay more money? Because I don't want to deal with soaking Irish moss for 36 hours. Well, 
chocolate bars? I have no idea. We couldn't find it in the store. We went to five like health food stores and they're like, I have to go to Ireland for that. Yeah. A lot of food. Just eat a piece of fruit. Yeah. So that was weird. But I also I have always loved uh, films and uh, like Hollywood culture and music culture. I'm fascinated by like uh, all those new true Hollywood stories, which. Uh, Venus is pretty into that kind of stuff. Um, and I think there's there's two very distinct sides to me where there's like the serious side to like, let's get things done. There's the side like that Amanda said yesterday, which was like dancing as a moron and, uh, and Disney World. And Amanda's like, people are staring at you. I was like, I don't care. I'm, I'm hanging out with children. It's great. Nobody's judging me. I feel like she fits in though. Like, I feel like people are like, they she looks like a child. Yes. I mean, <laughs> Doing whatever they were doing up to the side, and so I'm like, yeah, you stop. People are staring at you. We were like convinced, so it, it's a small world, right? We'll move on to the next question soon, but in a, it's a small world. In the beginning, all the countries are together and everybody's happy, and then like, they start merging. There's like the merging. They start merging together. And then, then they, well, no, so in the beginning, they're, they're all there together, and then you go through and then they're all separate. And so we were like, it seems like it's like a pre war, like everybody's happy, and then the war happens, and then everybody's and just separate. Like, oh, They're all in white at the end, and they're all merged. They're dead. They're dead. That's my theory. Like, it's symbolism for like war or something. Like, why are they all in white? It's not in Arkham anymore. And they're all happy because death is the upgrade equalizer. <laughs> Now, 
you also have to kind of live where the scene is. So you got to be where the work is. Um, uh, at some point, you would have to have an agent out there helping you get some work, but you could get some work on your own. There's lots of places out there that you can submit auditions. Um, uh, I also suggest to people to um, be a nice person to work with because relationships are key in the business because um, usually uh, people want to work with people that they like. That would seem to make sense, correct? Yes? Um, if they don't like you, they're not going to call you back. Uh, so, a lot of businesses repeat business, meaning they're calling you again. Um, those are some basics. Now, who would like to chime in? <laughs> I would definitely also add uh, acting classes, and I mean this is technically an acting class, but she said acting class. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying the acting class, but also improv. Oh, so improv. I'm saying improv is still acting. Oh, got it. Uh, because the number of times you'll be in the booth, like that's why a voice isn't gonna just be enough. So people come up to me and they're like, I can do this crazy voice, I should be voice actor. I'm like, cool. There's the number of times I can book something based on one voice, and then you go and they're like, hey, we love your read. Can you do it completely differently though? Like, then, or they'll throw a character at you. And if, like, you probably kind of builds up your muscle of being able to just go with the flow and be like, yes, and, and I will do this. And, um, you know, they'll be like, hey, we really like that, but instead of being like a, a warrior, can you be like a Swedish duck? And then you're like, yep, totally can. Or you get a lot of that when you take a voice acting class as opposed to, like if you take an animation class as opposed to just an acting class. Like I really did learn a lot when I first moved to LA and took animation classes from Sue Blue. I don't think she teaches anymore, but um, I think she does. I don't think she teaches anymore. But I learned a lot from her about how to come up with different voices. With how to just kind of come up, you know, how to talk like a cow. Which, I mean, everyone's idea of that might be different, but for you to create that out of, no, out of nothing, you know, for you, like, what do you think a cow would talk like? And what if you have to have five different cows talking? You know, where can that come from? And you have to have some sort of jumping off point. So classes are really good to take. And then they also work with you about my technique and stuff like that. So, um, uh, but I think that I used to just when I was younger think like, oh, you just kind of have it or you don't. But I have been with voice acting now for 18 years. And I've definitely seen myself improve and continue to get better and better. So there definitely is um, you know, a learning curve. So you can learn it and, and get better. Um, I think cold reading classes are super important. Uh, because most of the time we don't read the script ahead of time. So we'll walk into a session and we're reading our line. Usually you get to read through it one time and then you do it. So there's no memorizing. You've got to be really good at picking up the um, inflections and reading things pretty quickly and being able to put them into the scene and implement those lines. So cold reading is very effective and it's also helpful, like when Amanda said, if they heard something in your voice saying, we've got actually a really hard time casting this other character and they throw ten lines at you and say, can you just give us a pass real quick? Um, and that happens a lot on camera as well and I think cold reading has been uh, very helpful for me. I also completely unrelated to the business as a whole or being an actor, but just having the disposition for this industry, is you have to make sure it's something that you really love to do. Because as fun as it is to do this job, um, I think we get told no 15 times to the one time we hear yes. 15,000. Yes. <laughs> um, and that's if you're like good and you're working. You know I mean? And then there will be really some years where you don't work like at all for months where you're just not looking at anything because that's just kind of how that goes. Uh, so you have to be comfortable with like, I love this industry and I will do whatever I can to keep acting. And if that means like I'm not working for a couple months, then jump back into a class so that the muscle is still working so when auditions do come up, you're not super rusty and then you're not getting work because you haven't been working. 
working. So you have to really love every opportunity you get to audition, even if you know, like, I'm probably not getting this job. But it's an opportunity to, to get to act and play and be this character that I probably will never be again. But for those five minutes, I get to see what it's like to step into this character's shoes. Um, and not letting that no defeat you. So if you hear no so many times, you can't go, they hate me. They said that I, my face looks weird for this role. I must be hideous. No, you're just your face just doesn't look like Jason Momoa, and you're playing Jason Momoa's kid. It's nothing personal. It's just you don't look like Jason Momoa's kid. Uh, and so you can't be like, because I don't look like Jason Momoa, I'm never gonna act. I'm not an actor. No, you just didn't, you weren't right for that one role. Now get out there and keep acting and go at it again. Uh, so you can't you can't give up. It's just like the Olympics. You've got to try to make it on one day. Like, I remember when I first went to LA and was auditioning, and then I'd, I'd audition, and I'd get in my car, and I'd go over the lines in my head and go, I should have done it like this. Yeah. I should have You, now I read her like, you know, five things a day, and you literally have to read it and just be on, you know, go to the MTM. Now yeah. I hear you, and you're like, did I? Yeah, you're like, did I read that? <laughs> well, now I'm like, I get a job, and I'm like, I actually did that job? Like, I can't even remember the work I did. I mean, you have to like, just read it and move on. Uh, bouncing off of what Sharon said, I think the thing that you have to, in addition to loving this work, is that you have to remember that it's work. I think that people see that it's acting and that it's fun and there's all these cool things about it, but all, every single one of these ladies up here treat it like a job, which means that you train for it, you study, you do all the things but on a professional level that you would do if you were trying to become a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. You shouldn't work any less hard trying to pursue acting as if you were if, uh, you know, from pursuing any other career. If it's a career, that's how you're going to succeed, is to treat it like it's any other job. Yeah, especially like, you know, if you're trying to open a restaurant, you get a loan, like you have to invest up front, and a lot of people don't realize how much money, if you're serious about this career, you do have to invest a lot. So you have to get here on camera, you buy headshots, and you take classes, and getting a voiceover demo reel can be a thousand, two thousand dollars. Like, there's a lot, you know, and I'm stupid, and I do cast director workshops, which I'm not going to do anymore. Why? They're great. You have like thousands of dollars on them, and they're just like, oh, great, thanks. You have to, we'll talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's something in LA. But, um, yeah. No. I want to add one more thing. Um, singing classes, singing lessons are also really helpful for this particular line of work. What'd you say? Singing. Huh? Singing? Yeah. It's good to learn? Oh, yeah. Helps. I actually moved to LA to do music first, and I kind of fell into the voiceover through the music world, and it only helped me. Mm. I guess that's Thank you. 
many years. We do have a minute for logging in my little computer. <laughs> don't, don't, don't we say something, something about like patronizing or chat one of our things? We all like, like, say Actually, I'm getting to ask kindly if you would ask me to answer this. Sign each of your little 
guys there. Uh, at some point we'll auction them off in my amazing Toys for Tots charity auction and raise money for kids in need. So that's all going to be uh, a charity thing. So thanks, guys. And then uh, our last question to answer is... Um, Like you could be here, yeah. Anything, anywhere, or be. You mean in real life, if we, we ourselves could go there? Yes. You want to be in Game of Thrones, or you want to be in Star Wars. If you could be in oh. fantasy, if you could become some character. I want to be in Star Wars, but it has to be like when Kylo Ren is around because he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> So actually you can step in shape in Star Trek. Or... Here's the thing, I love Star Wars, but I would not want to live in that universe where like the Empire is like in control and it like really sucks for a lot of people. And I would, like sacrifice my my life to prevent, you know, whole planets from being destroyed. Seriously. I wanna be in some sort of like animal thing. Like, you know, like, no, 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 like, something like, you know, like, sing or, like, pet, the topi or something like that. Fun music and, like, cute animals. That sounds great. I, I don't know. I guess I just want to live somewhere with superpowers. So I feel like I want to be pretty close or, like, I would say X-Men, but I feel like there's, like, a lot of racism. And that's actually it. Ladies, thank you so much for spending all of our lives.